Luke here with Solid State Logic, and today we're taking a closer look at the SSL UF1 with Luna. UF1 is an incredibly powerful one fader controller that packs in the same functionality you'd expect from a control surface twice its size, boasting two high resolution displays, a fully motorized fader, and all metal chassis. UF1 brings SSL quality and hands on control straight to your desktop. With comprehensive command of your DAW, UF1 is equipped with dedicated transport buttons, as well as the ability to control pans, sends, plugins, and even customize 46 soft keys specifically to your workflow. What's more, UF1 allows you to work with up to three different DAWs simultaneously and easily switch between them. What really sets UF1 apart is its integration with the SSL meter plugin. Viewable in all its glory on the impressive 4.3-inch IPS display and completely controllable from the UF1 and the 360 plug-in mixer. UF1 can be used on its own as your main DAW controller, or it can be partnered with the UF8 to give you an enhanced SSL control surface experience. It's also the perfect hardware expansion for the UC1 plug-in controller, giving you direct access to 360-enabled channel strips and on-screen visual feedback of your EQ curves. When unpacking UF1, you will find a 12 volt DC power supply, two stands and an associated screw and hex key to attach them to the UF1. You'll also find a 1.5 meter USB-C type cable and handy C to A adapter should you require it. Flip the UF1 over and choose which set of pre-drilled holes to attach the stands to. Different hole pairs give you different angle options. You can even swap the rubber feet to the opposite end of each stand to allow for a steeper angle. Once your stands are set up, connect the UF1 to your computer via the USB-C port. The USB-A port labelled through is a built-in USB hub that can be used to chain through a UF8 or UC1, or it can be used for dongles. The two jack sockets are for connecting foot switches and can be assigned to door commands like play and stop. Now it's time to register our UF1 and download the required software. Registering UF1 allows you to claim your complimentary SSL meter plugin license, so let's do that first. Go to the SSL website and log into your account, or create one if you need to. Once logged in, go to My Products, then click Register Product, then Register Hardware. Choose SSL UF1 from the drop down list and fill in the form. The serial number of the UF1 can be found on the base of your unit. Once successfully registered, click on Get Your Additional Software. Then enter your iLock user ID and click Validate. Once validated by the system, click Deposit and then your meter plugin license will be deposited into your iLock account. Open iLock License Manager and activate your SSL meter plugin to your computer or iLock. Finally, head back to the SSL website and go to the Downloads page and filter the list to SSL 360. Download and install the SSL Meter plugin and the SSL 360 software itself, which is required for UF1 to function. Once SSL 360 is installed, launch the app. Your UF1 will appear on the home page, alongside any other SSL controllers you may have connected. The first thing you'll need to do is update the UF1 firmware via the Update Firmware button. Do not unplug the unit whilst this is in progress. Once the firmware update has completed, allow a bit of time for UF1 to reappear on screen. To complete the UF1 hardware setup, you can go to the sleep settings menu and adjust the amount of inactivity time before the UF1 hardware goes to sleep. Just type in your preferred value into the green text area, or you can turn the sleep off completely if you prefer by disabling the square tick box. One of UF1's special features is its ability to trigger keyboard command sequences from your favorite DAW shortcuts. These are assigned using SSL 360, which we'll cover later. When you first plug in your UF1, Mac OS should present the Keyboard Setup Assistant window because it wants you to identify which region, Europe, America, or Japan, this as unyet identified keyboard is from. If you connect UF1 to your computer before installing SSL 360, you'll need to close this Setup Assistant and come back to it because SSL 360 needs to be installed on your computer in order to continue through this setup process. Once 360 has been installed, you can make this Setup Assistant reappear again by doing the following. Open up Mac System Preferences. Go to Keyboard and click Change Keyboard Type. 
When presented with the identifying your keyboard screen and you are being asked to press the key immediately to the right of the shift key, go to UF1, press and hold the 360 button and whilst keeping this pressed, press the Mac key ID button. This will move you through to the final steps of the process where you can choose your region and click done. Next, we want to configure UF1 to work with Luna. To do this, let's open up 360 and navigate to the control setup page. In the DAW configuration section, choose Luna from the drop down list for DAW1. If you are using other DAWs, you can go ahead and choose these for DAWs 2 and 3 also, or you can just leave them set to none if you are only using one DAW. Now, proceed to the UF1 page and set layer 1 to Luna. Again, if you're using multiple DAWs, you can set layers 2 and 3 to those DAWs, or you can choose the 360 plugin mixer. Once you have configured your layers, you can easily switch between them by pressing and holding the 360 button, and whilst keeping this held down, press the desired button from the top row. You'll notice there's nothing much happening yet on screen, and that's because we need to configure an MCU controller inside of Luna. So, within Luna, Open up the sidebar by clicking the UA Diamond logo to the left of the screen and then click on Settings. Or from the Preferences panel, click Settings, then click on Controllers. Now, in one of the MIDI control surface rows, click under Input Devices and select SSL vMIDI Port 1 Source. And under the Output Devices, select SSL vMIDI Port 1 Destination. Finally, select the box in the On column to enable the control surface. The amount of SSL vMIDI ports you need to configure depends on the amount of SSL controllers you are using. If you've just got a UF1, or a UF1 and a UF8, then you only need to configure SSL vMIDI port 1, because UF8 and UF1 both communicate on the first port of a given controller layer. Please note, if you're configuring Luna on layer 2, the port number would start with 5, and on layer 3, they would start with 9. Finally, within the same preferences menu, you can configure Luna's MCU options as you wish. I prefer to leave Bank to Selected Track, Scroll Luna when Banking, and Use Surface Fader Taper all on. With our setup complete, UF1 has bounced into action, with the track metering and track name on the small display and the DAW time readout boldly presented across the large screen. You can switch between SMPTE and bars and beats by pressing the button here. On the bottom of the small display, you'll see the parameter currently assigned to the VPOT, which right now is PAN. A push on the pot will default the PAN to center. It's a similar affair on the large display, where across the bottom you can see the first four channels of the current controller bank. You can control the PAN of these channels in the same way. You can even use the 5 to 8 button to get to channels 5 to 8 in the bank. Let's disable 5 to 8 and go back to 1 to 4 on the large screen. Down in the fader section, we have the solo, cut or mute, and select keys, along with a super smooth 100mm motorized fader. When I move a fader, you will see the display automatically show a fader dB readout for a short time before returning to show me the pan values. We've then got the flip key. Great for moving parameters such as pan or sends onto the fader for precise control and writing automation changes. At the bottom of the strip there is the master button, which in Luna will lock the fader to the main output channel. Moving along the bottom of UF1, we come to the primary transport keys with rewind, which goes to the start of your session, fast forward, which goes to the end, stop, play and record. Above them, we have the secondary transport controls, of which the first two are currently unassigned, followed by loop, click, as well as quick key one, which is assigned to toggle mixer view, and quick key two, which spills the main bus. The secondary transport keys can also be customized within the 360 app, as can the top row of soft keys. There are 10 pages of soft keys you can customize, and you can cycle through using the left and right arrow keys here. So, Let's say we wanted to change the function of the keys in the secondary transport that are currently unassigned. We simply open up 360, go to the UF1 page, click on the DAW commands button, and then find the one we want from the list. So, for example, if I'd rather have this key assigned to solo clear, I can reassign this like so. Now, when I go back to UF1, 
you'll see that this key is now performing that function. The secondary transport keys also have a shifted function. By engaging the shift key, these keys are repurposed as automation keys. We have off, read, trim, latch, and touch. Write has no automation function in Luna, so is disabled. So let's go ahead and put the channel into automation mode by selecting the channel with the cell key and then pressing the desired automation button. You'll see the automation mode in the mixer window corresponding to the changes made on UF1, ready to record the automation. Moving up from the transport, we come to the cursor keys with a mode key in the center. When the zoom key is lit, the left and right cursor keys zoom in and out, and the up and down cursor keys increase and decrease all of the track heights respectively. Pressing the mode key again, the up and down cursor keys change the selected track and the left and right cursor keys move you between markers. Next to the cursor keys, we then come to the large jog wheel. In Luna, we can use the UF1's jog wheel to scroll through the session, moving through the timeline forward by moving the jog wheel clockwise and backwards in an anti-clockwise movement. Be aware, the scrub soft key has no active control in Luna and is therefore disabled. Let's now take a look at using the channel encoder. By default, the channel encoder is used to move your DAW tracks across the UF1 surface in increments of one channel at a time. Pushing the channel encoder brings up a submenu of different modes it can be assigned to. To choose a different option, simply scroll until it's highlighted and then push to confirm. Fader cell mode allows us to move the focused fader within the confines of a bank of controller channels. For example, I now have changed UF1's fader so that it is looking at channel 5 in the current controller bank, which you can see in the top area of the display. You may need to use this function to access tracks at the end of the Lunar Mixer when the bank of 8 faders UF1 is controlling butts up against the end of the session. Focus mode emulates the scroll function of a mouse. This can be a really nice way of controlling plugins or anything else on screen that corresponds to a mouse scroll operation. Simply open up a plugin. I've got Blitzer open here, and hover your computer mouse over a control and turn the encoder. Now I can dial in the perfect amount, just as if I was using analog hardware by letting my ears set the level instead of the mouse. The final channel encoder mode is volume, allowing me to control the system volume level from UF1, if the audio device I'm using can be controlled by the operating system's volume up and down control. For example, if you're on the road with your headphones plugged into the computer's built-in audio output. The Send Soft key assigns the send level controls across the VPOTs on UF1. In Luna, I have various ways in which I can control sends. Let's navigate to a track I want to control the sends on and press the sends button. On this page, I can access all the sends on the particular track, with the first four send levels adjustable here and using the 5 to 8 key, I can go to the sends 5 to 8 like so. Let's jump back to 1 to 4. Pushing on the first VPOT takes me into send 1, giving me deeper control of that particular send on the current channel. Here, turning the first VPOT allows me to change the send destination, whilst a push toggles pre and post. The second VPOT now gives me access to send levels 1, and a push defaults the send to 0. The third VPOT gives me pan control, and the fourth VPOT gives me mute on and off. The 5 to 8 keys give me access to the same parameters for send 2. Pushing the send button again, now I can toggle through the rest of the sends in this detailed channel view like so, until I come all the way back up to exit send mode and back into pan. Alternatively, if I'm interested in controlling a particular send slot across multiple channels, I can press and hold the send key and whilst keeping this held, push on a VPOT, for example VPOT 2, and I'll be able to control send 2 across all channels and of course I can push to default the send. The cues in Luna can also be controlled in exactly the same fashion via the Q button. In SoftKey Bank 2 we have the Spill main function, which is also assigned to Quick Key 2. Next to this we have the Record Arm function. I simply use the channel encoder to put the track I want to record enable onto the fader of UF1 and press it like so. Seeing as I have the left arrow and the secondary transport free, I'm going to go to 360 and assign this to Rec Ready for more convenient access. A 
Earlier in the video, we've looked at reassigning some DAW commands to our secondary transport keys. Now, let's take a look at reassigning a soft key to a keyboard shortcut. To do this, let's go into 360 and go into the Lunar layer. Let's select Soft Key Bank 3. Something I like to do is program soft keys to insert and automatically name a marker for me, so I can play back a song and drop in markers efficiently. Let me show you how. Open up the soft key editor window and choose keyboard macro instead of DAW command. By means of an example, let's create a keyboard macro that inserts a chorus marker for us. I'm going to program in numerical keypad enter, which inserts a new marker for me, followed by typing the word chorus and finally enter to confirm the marker insertion. I'll give this key the short label chorus and close the window. Now, if I go back to Luna and push this soft key, it inserts a marker named Chorus automatically for me. Obviously, this is just one example of how you can use this powerful feature to help speed up your workflow. One final thing to mention, jumping back to 360 and the keyboard macro editor window, is the ability to add a delay line between the commands. This can be useful for more complex sequences, where software windows sometimes take a short time to open, ensuring the command is executed properly at each stage. Any changes you make to soft key assignments are automatically saved in the background for you by 360. But if you wish to save and load different profiles, for example a tracking configuration and a mixing configuration, you can do this via the save and load buttons in the left hand menu. If you wish to reset a DAW profile to its factory ship settings, simply use the revert button. When using UF1 with Luna, there are three different modes we can choose from. We can toggle between the different modes simply by pressing the Modes button, or we can jump straight to the desired mode by pressing and holding Mode and then using the options on the soft keys to jump straight to that mode. The default mode we have is General DAW, which is the mode we've been working in so far. We can then change to DAW Faders mode. The VPOTS now will control the fader levels for the four channels in the controller bank. We can access channels 5 to 8 by simply pressing the 5 to 8 button like so. But let's jump back to 1 to 4. The final mode is the SSL meter mode, allowing direct control of the SSL meter plugin parameters. We'll cover this in a moment, but first let's briefly explore the UF8 and UF1 combo. The UF1 is a perfect complement to the UF8 control surface. As you can see, both controllers are in perfect sync, and as I select pan on one, the other unit follows. Same for sense. If I like, I can switch the fader on UF1 to control the master fader in Luna simply by pressing the master button. And for even more flexibility, I can have the channel encoders working in different modes. For example, I can put the UF1 into focus mode, which emulates the mouse scroll, great for quick hands on control of DAW parameters, whilst the channel encoder on UF8 remains in its default channel mode, allowing me to bank the control surface around the session, one channel at a time. One of the primary applications of the UF1 is to control the SSL meter plugin and deliver key information on your mix without cluttering your DAW view. We can access meter mode in two different ways. If you are on your DAW layer, then simply toggle to the yellow mode. You can also toggle into the meter mode when UF1 is assigned to the plugin mixer layer, but more on this later. As I insert the SSL meter plugin onto my mix bus in the DAW, it automatically appears on the UF1 screen. We can toggle through the three different views of the meter plugin directly from the UF1 overview to the analog meters to the 31 band real time analyzer. The meter plugin is also mirrored in the SSL 360 plugin mixer sidebar above the bus compressors. Back to UF1. The reset button clears any overloads or max values. Fine puts the VPOTS into a finer resolution for dialing in precise parameter values and the preset button allows me to quickly load my meter plugin presets directly from the surface. The first VPOT always allows me to select from any of the eight possible meter plugins that are connected to 360. In the overview screen, on the left, we can see instantaneous peak and RMS levels on the meters, and we can change the scale by cycling through the parameters via the second VPOT, with various linear, non-linear and case system options. The next VPOT gives us control of the RMS integration time, which can be reset to default by clicking on the VPOT. 
The meter readout in the center of the screen gives me a precise text feed to understand the meters, with max and current readouts for both peak and RMS levels. To the right of the screen we have the Lissajou phase scope, along with stereo balance and phase correlation meters above and below. The fourth VPOT allows me to change the fade rate of the Lissajou. I can use the page right arrow to get to the peak hold time and to set whether true peak metering is on or off. Moving to the analog view, we're presented with a VU meter readout by default, a trusted metering method for analog balances used in music studios for years. The VU meter display uses two needles to give insight to your mix, with the black needle displaying the current level and the red needle the max level. Amongst the parameters for the VU meter, we have the choice of picking between the plus 4 DBU 0 VU standard or the minus 2 DBU 0 VU standard. And to the right of that we have the reference level on the fourth VPOT, which allows us an easy way of tweaking the VU's operation to suit your preferred gain staging in the DAW. If you are using a VU meter as a critical part of your hybrid mixing system, then you would set the reference level to match your digital to analog converter's operating level. For example, for a plus 18 dBU system, set the reference to minus 18. Then if you use a signal generator to send a sine wave of 4 dBs higher, i.e. minus 14 dBFS, you will see the VU readout as zero. Moving to the second parameter page, we have options for the max needle, allowing us to switch it off, give it a two second hold, or move it to an infinite max reading. The third VPOT gives us the option to change the VU from monitoring left and right to mid side, and finally on the fourth VPOT, we can dial in a global delay for the meter plugin, should you need to manually compensate for differing latencies across multiple DAW buses. Finally, moving back to the first page of the soft keys, you can switch from VU to PPM with the second VPOT, PPM being the popular metering reference in broadcast for balancing program material. The final view from the meter plugin is the Real-Time Analyzer, or RTA. This view gives us a 31-band real-time analyzer graphic readout displaying the source material's frequency response between 20 Hz and 20 kHz. Via the second VPOT, we can interrogate each band independently to see real-time level information displayed at the top of the graph. As well as adjusting the scale top and bottom parameters via VPOTs 3 and 4 to narrow down our viewpoints like so. Moving to soft key page 2, we can then add further adjustment to the display, selecting peak hold time, RTA weighting options and finally RTA averaging from real time to fast, medium, slow or infinite settings. The last of which is great for getting an idea of the tonal qualities of your entire mix. On the final parameter page, you can specify the analysis source, which defaults to left and right sum, but can be changed to be left only, right only, mid or side. UF1 is the perfect hardware extension for the UC1, giving deeper access to the 360 enabled channel strip plugins like Channel Strip 2 and 4KB via the plugin mixer layer in SSL 360. When working in the plugin mixer layer, we can jump between SSL meter mode and channel strip mode. Meter mode is identical to accessing the meter plugin and its parameters from a DAW layer, so now we're going to focus on channel strip mode. Firstly, let's set the UF1 to control the plugin mixer on layer 3. Next, Let's make sure the tick box for UF1 follows selected plugin mixer channel strip instance is on, but let's leave automatically page soft keys to follow last move channel strip in plugin parameter disabled for now. Then in the control setup page, make sure that the plugin mixer transport is linked to the DAW your channel strips are hosted within. This ensures we get the DAW transport controls on the plugin mixer layer. Now that's set, let's jump across to the plugin mixer page where we can see all our 360 enabled channel strips we have in our DAW session. I can hide and close the sidebar to view my connected meter plugins and bus compressor instances. I can also hide or show the fader tray section and collapse my meters at the top if I want to manipulate my screen real estate further. If we take a look at the UF1 on the small display above the fader, we can see the track's name on the selected channel strip along with the inserted channel strip type, bypass key, DB level and our pan position controllable via the VPOT below. If we jump over to the large screen on the UF1, we can see the currently selected DAW time display readout in the top center, and the current DAW host to the left. <laughs>
which we can change directly from the UF1 by clicking on the channel encoder, cycling to another DAW host if we have one, and pushing to confirm. Please note that this section of the tutorial video is DAW agnostic, so don't be concerned that we have Pro Tools on the display here. The functionality from UF1 is similar regardless of DAW. On the opposite side of the display, we see the current soft key bank page, which we can cycle through as you'd expect with the arrow keys. At the bottom of UF1, Quick Key 1 is assigned to Solo Clear for any DAWs where 360 is not linked to the DAW's own solo and cut system, and Quick Key 2 allows you to put the encoders into fine resolution mode. And finally, in the middle of the large display, we can see the visualization of the EQ curve on the currently selected channel strip. Across the VPOTs below, we have access to the channel strip parameters via paging the soft key banks, and you can see the high and low pass filters, followed by each EQ band's gain, frequency, and Q width mapped to the associated VPOTs, along with the soft key toggles for band pass and curve types if available. The real beauty of combining UF1 and UC1 is that certain parameters previously limited to UC1's extended functions menu are now accessible via the first page of UF1 soft keys, making the duo a powerful pair, no more menu diving required. As you can see, we can access the pan, width, mic pre, out trim, and compressor mix all across the VPOTs. And we now have access to the plugin fader too, as well as solo and cut. Scrolling through the channels via the encoder on the UF1 will cause the UC1 to follow and vice versa. We can also use the bank buttons to move in blocks of eight for quickly navigating through our mix. Whilst we're looking at the navigation of the channels in the plugin mixer, it's also worth noting that we can use the cursor keys to quickly navigate the plugin mixer window with the up and down arrows moving us vertically up and down the channel strip and left and right allowing us to scroll through the mixer window horizontally. A really cool feature is the master mode, which allows UC1 and UF1 to work independently. Pressing master, I can now set UF1 to control a different channel to UC1. This is convenient if we wish to control one channel's EQ whilst working on another's dynamic sections perhaps, or if we wish to leave the UF1 to control the fader of a lead vocal whilst working on other channels with a UC1 surface. A final tip, if you are using UF1 without a UC1, then you may wish to enable automatically paged soft keys to follow last move channel strip parameter, so that UF1 will automatically page its controls to the relevant page of parameters in response to moving a plugin or plugin mixer control. For example, if I move the ratio control on this compressor, then UF1 pages to show me the ratio control on the surface, and I can quickly dive in for hands-on control of it. We hope you've enjoyed this UF1 tutorial video, and for more information on UF1, head to the SSL website. Or for more information on using UF1 with a different DAW, check out some of our other UF1 videos on the Solid State Logic YouTube page.